Sabbath, everyone. <laughs> the wonder of it all. You know, when we look at the creation of God, we see God and His mighty power. Let's be in a spirit of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for again for allowing us to come into your house of worship. We thank you that you love us so much, that you care for us, that you sent Jesus. You sent him to pay for our sins, to die on the cross. Father, we would ask that you would forgive us of our sins. And Father, we thank you for what Jesus is doing now. He's in, a, he's in the uh, heavenly sanctuary in the most holy place. He's, me, he's mediating for us, Lord. He's cleansing the sanctuary and he's cleansing our hearts. And He's waiting for us, and He's going to put away our sins. Father, we thank You and we praise You because You're worthy of our thanks and our praise. You are the mighty Creator, and we're awestruck when we look at the wonder of it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I've talked about this before, and uh, the Milky Way galaxy, I guess y'all know what I'm going to say now. If you look at the uh, Milky Way galaxy, and you look what science says, this is uh, science, uh, what do we call it, secular science, says that the, the Milky Way is traveling at 1.3 million miles per hour through the universe. That staggers the mind. It's a little slower than light, but you know, I think it's like uh, six or seven hundred million times slower than light, but one if you think about it, if you've ever seen a, a fast car go 200 miles an hour and go by you, if you blink your eye, go you can't you miss it. This is this is man. This is about man's speed. You know the land records, the speed records. Not not in the, I'm not talking about the jets or anything, but the, the land speed, the cars. It's just it's unbelievable. And when we look how fast our sun is traveling through the through the uh, universe of the Milky Way, which is a galaxy. It's uh, one in, uh, I believe it's, we've got, I believe it's, scientists say we have, I can't remember how many trillions of galaxies there are, and there's like two billion planets in each galaxy. Well, we're in a small galaxy. Well, we're in a medium-sized galaxy, and it's, the Mil it's called the Milky Way, and the sun is traveling through the Milky Way at almost 500,000 miles per hour. Okay. The galaxy's moving at 1.3. The sun is traveling at that high rate of speed through the galaxy. But and I left this out of my last sermon. That, uh, the Earth, you know how fast the Earth moves around the sun at the same time as it as it's traveling through uh, creation. Sixty-seven thousand miles per hour we're traveling around the sun. This is according to secular science. And how fast is the Earth spinning? Uh, we've talked about that before. We got 24,000 miles circumference, and it's 24 hours in a day. How fast is that? A thousand miles per hour. If you put all that together, it staggers the imagination. It, it, it just shows you how minute that one of us are. And it's so incredible that God went to the cross for just one of us. It is, it, it's an incredible thing to think about. Um, the sun is moving through the galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is traveling. And the earth is actually chasing the sun. The, the sun is moving and the earth is going like this trying to keep up with the sun. If God failed for just an instant, I mean an instant, I'm not trying to scare you, but we worry about these, all these little things that on planet Earth. We're always worried about something. God, if He just took His mind off of us. God knows when a little sparrow falls to the ground. We should be thrilled as Christians that we know the God of all creation. We should be so happy when we come in here that I, we're busting with joy. I can't understand it why people aren't. Amen. Amen. God loves us so much that he created this and this package that we're in. He said, here, I'm going to make you a steward over this package. This, this, this human body. We look at, I mean, when you look at the universe, 
you see this vast creation that just blows us away. But when you go down to the minute little things, God even cares about the little birds. He says, I know when a sparrow falls to the ground. We have, when, when, you, when you look at the human body, you look at just the hand. God has made these glorious bodies. And the technology and the engineering that went into to, to one of us, one of the least of us, would be billions of dollars to recreate. It can't be done. They've tried it. They have, we have robots, of course. Robots are expensive. If you, I don't know if you've ever priced one, but I'm sure they're very expensive. But God has created this. And, and, and if we want to be sentimental about things in our life, if you want to get sentimental about something, I know people give you stuff and you say, oh, I just love that. I, I cherish that. I put it away in this little special spot and I keep it. It's special. But when you look at the human body, we should cherish what this, this, this God created. And He gave it to us. And He said, here, I'm going to let you uh, be a steward over this for a period of time. And we should just marvel at what God has done for us. We should love Him for what He's done. And, and, and what did He do? He, this, the, the price He paid, God came down from heaven and paid the price on the cross for each one of us. We should, uh, I mean, there, when you start thinking about God, it just staggers the mind. It, it would cost a fortune to make one of us. And, 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 and like I said, we, let's be sentimental about things that matter. I mean, God has, has paved the roads to heaven with what? Gold. That's what He paves His roads with. What has He got for us? It says, eye has not seen, ear has, ear has not heard the things that God has for us in His, in His, in His heaven for us. I mean, the body itself is like, wow, God designed this and He designed me. I should be more, this is my personal opinion, that I, I should just be uh, overwhelmed by this creation. And I walk around in. And, I, and, and like I said, I am a steward of this creation. I, I got a message today that I don't know how to say it. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to give this message. <laughs> I, I've, I've been pricked in my heart to give the message. <clears throat> I am God's property. <coughs> Excuse me. And you are God's property. Whether you believe it or not, it, it, it's irrelevant whether you believe you're God's property or not. You're God's property. And, and God has asked us to love each other. My mic is going in and out. Right. Well, is there something wrong with me? Well, I shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of you smirking. Anyway. I, uh, maybe I'll need a handheld. I don't travel around. There it goes again. It's back. Well, we'll see how long it lasts this time. I'll try to move around. I have trouble not moving. You know, we put things on this body. Anyway, I don't. I, I, I'm not here to to uh, to tell. I'm not here to be the police. I'm not here to be uh, the fashion police. But would you take a, uh, a, a bumper sticker and put it on a $200,000 car? <laughs> you think about that. <clears throat> what do we do to this creation that God has given us? You think about it. I'm not going to go, I'm not policing you, I'm not telling you what to do, but think about it. The creator of all the universe. He went to the cross for us. I, this week, it brought tears to my eyes. I saw a man on the ground in another country starving to death. 
He was starving to death. And a missionary walked up to him. And the missionary could barely function because the missionary understood this man on the ground is me by the grace of God. We, we can't, we, we could never be, God chose when we were going to be born. God chose when we were going to be born. He, taught, he chose to who we were going to be born to. So everything that, let, let's, I want to go to Psalm uh, 139. And I want to start with verse 14. It says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvel are, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Fearfully and wonderfully made. How did God just make us? He, 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 he made us out of the dust of the ground. And after Adam's sin, he told Adam, he says, you're going to return to the dust of the ground one day. So, what are we? We are dust. And who is God? The creator of all things. And He loves us. And we are dust. <laughs> Thine eyes did see my structure yet being unperfect. And in Thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Can you imagine God's thoughts? It'd blow up, but it, it, it would ruin the, the uh, Microsoft computers. All of them in the whole world. It would just, just fill up the hard drives. It says, I should count, If I should count them, they are more in number than, stand, than, excuse me, than sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Now that verse 16... I, I spell. I, I, I printed it out in the New English translation. It says, "Your eyes saw me when I was inside the womb." That's the New English translation. I saw. It says, "Thy in, in, in the in the King James version, it says, "Thy eyes see me. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written." Okay. It says in the next. Part of that verse, it says, all, in the New English translation, it says, All the days ordained for me were recorded in your scroll before one of them came into existence. That is That staggers the mind. Remember, the sun's going through, you know, 490,000 miles an hour, almost 500 miles, and, and the sun's like, oh, and the earth's following the sun. God's keeping up. He's keeping up with everything. It, 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 if, if, what if we got close to another galaxy? Could we get through that galaxy without, you know, you know, Star Trek stuff where you, you know, you start slamming into other ga other planets? Anyway, I don't. That's not what I want you to focus on. I want to fo you to focus that God cares so much for each one of you. If you looked inside the human body and you could see the bio machinery that put the cells together, that put the the proteins together that form the cells that form like a fingernail, a finger, your hair, you would, it would stagger your mind. Just one of us. And how many of us are on the planet? Almost seven billion. How does God keep up with that? And all the other planets. It's like, it staggers the imagination. The finite trying to figure out the infinite will, it staggers the mind. You, you can be put in the nut house trying to figure it out. <laughs> They don't have nut houses anymore, but they used to. <laughs> right. You got your sermon title, God is Keeping Up. Man, that's good, Ray. You have to remind me later. I forget so fast. <laughs> but anyway, this story, I was going to tell this story before I started my sermon. And i got to go back to, this, go back to the story. I still got plenty of time. This story <clears throat> kind of shows you how important prayer is. And we know that the prayer is our conversation that we have with God. God. We speak to God through prayer. And God speaks to us how? Through His Word. And through the Spirit of Prophecy. God speaks to us all the, constantly. But there was a group of people in another country. I can't remember the name of the country, so it's probably good. 
Because y'all can check, check up on me and see if the prayer was true. But just think, think about it. God can still, God can do anything. Anyway, I don't want to go there. A group of people in this city wanted to evangelize another city that was 150 miles away. What's the, what's, the 150 mile, what's the city 150 miles away from us now? Jacksonville? No, Jacksonville is 90. Tampa. I think. Tampa? Tampa? No, it's 150 miles? Okay. Okay, let's say we're going to evangelize Tampa. We don't have cars. We're in a poor country. We can't go and drive over there and go knock on the doors and, and tell everybody about God. So what we're going to do is we're going to form a prayer group and we're going to start praying at 4 o'clock in the morning and we're going to pray at 6 o'clock. Two hours every day. And I forget how many months these people were praying for this city. Because they didn't have an Adventist church. There wasn't an Adventist in the city. Well, finally, one person uh, contacted the church and said, I want to be a member of your church. And she was an older lady who was, had like stage four cancer. She was dying. And these people have been praying for, month, for months and they said, is this all God's going to give us? It's just one lady and she's almost dead? What is this? So they were discouraged, but some of the people, faithful people said, well, we got to keep praying. So they kept praying. And, and finally one day somebody said, well, this, this is our sister is dying and she needs help. And we can't go get her to get help, so let's call one of our neighbors and see if we can pay them to go help this lady. So they called uh, one of her neighbors, and, and they said, will you, will you take care of this lady? And the lady says, mm, I, we'll pay you 20 bucks an hour. And the lady said, oh, yeah, that's great. And we just need for you to clean her up and take care of her, cook for her. And uh, I want you to read... They, they, they said, we want you to read a scripture to her. And it was Psalm 30. I think it was, it was a 30 or 32. I believe it was 30. And uh, I'm going to turn to Psalm 30. I'm not going to read it yet. But the person cleaned her up, cooked her food, took real good care of her. And uh, well, she said, you really want me to read scripture to her? We're going to pay you 20 bucks an hour to read it. And, they, and the lady finds it, oh, okay, 20 bucks an hour to read. And, and she took care of her. Well, weeks went by, and they called up, and they said, are you taking care of the lady? You, you feed her and, and cleaning her up? And the, uh, they said, yeah, I'm cleaning her up. I'm feeding her. Are you reading her the scripture? And uh, she says, no, I haven't read the scripture yet. Well, you got to read her the scripture. So, a couple more weeks went by, and the lady's taking care of her. Well, the lady died. Yeah, she was going over to take care of her, and the doctor was there, and the, the morgue was there, and the doctor was pronouncing her dead, and and, and she looks, and, she, and they were fixing to take her out on the stretcher. And she said, uh, no, stop, stop, I've got to do the ritual. I told these people I'm to do the ritual. And... Uh, the doctor and the more people, they finally, they, they gave it to her because she was adamant about reading this. But she, she, she opened Psalm, I believe it was Psalm 30. Yep. I'm in Proverbs, I can't read Psalms. It says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up, and I have not let my foes rejoice over me. And she's reading over the dead body. O oh Lord God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. And the lady sat up. She sat up. And the guy, he's reading the Bible, and he just he goes, and he's just freaking out. And he sees, he looks at the scriptures, and he says, he, there's power. He says, there's power here. And these the doctors, you know, they can't believe it. The more people, they're ready to take her out. And here she goes, she sits up. This guy, or excuse me, this lady, she was so excited. She started going door to door saying, there's power in this book. And she would read that psalm. And she went to the whole city and evangelized the whole city. And churches got raised from people that were praying 150 miles away. 
We can do the same thing in New Smyrna Beach. We have got to pray. Sure, we can do mailers and they help, but when you're when you got God, when God, when you have God as your uh, when God is in your presence, if God is in this building, people are gonna know. Amen. People are gonna feel it. If each one of us prays for God's presence. We need to pray for God's presence. Not just pray for, for God's... You know, we have God's doctrines. I mean, we're filled up with God's doctrines. we we we, we got doctrines everywhere. But we know the doctrines, but do we know the God of the doctrines? That is where it's at, the God of the doctrines. We want God's presence. If God's presence is with you... I mean, it's like... Back, what was the name of that guy that went out over and he fought and he never carried a gun? Desmond Doss. The man had the presence of God. He said he could hear the bullets going by his head. Can you imagine? He was in enemy territory carrying bodies out. The presence of God. That is, that's what, that's what it's all about. Why are we here? I mean, I love y'all. I like hanging out with you, but the presence of God is why we're here. You know, this has been revolutionary for me. I, I used to have a lot of papers flinging them around. I got my sermon right here this time. And it, it has helped. My relationship with God should be priority. It says, if you love your husband or wife or your children more than me, then you don't love me. We're all creatures. We, are, we came from the hand of God. God is the creator. We are not supposed to love the creatures more than the creator. I know if you love your wife, your husband, your, your kids, you know, it's easy to, to love your kids and your wife. But God says, if you love them more than me. Why did God destroy the earth the first time? Sin. Was in the hearts of the men continually. Yes. It says that he repented of creating man. It's going to happen again one day. You know, it's the little things that have creeped into the church. And are we legalists when we want to follow God's rules? Do we follow God's rules because we want to be saved? Why do we follow God's rules? And this God I've described up here, who wouldn't fall in love with him? I mean, I mean that's, that's madness to not fall in love with a God who went to the cross and paid a terrible debt for each one of us. How can you not fall in love with that, with, with, with the Creator? Satan is crafty. He took the human race, Adam and Eve. Took them down. Down. He took them down. I don't mean to say it like, I don't mean to be irreverent, but God, but Satan wooed Adam and Eve away from God. Did he not? No. He wooed them. He, he, it's an affair. He took them one step at a time. Of course, Adam he took one step, but Eve, he took her one step at a time. Every time he gains a little bit of power, every time he gains a step on you, he rejoices. All these little, all these little steps will add up. I love you, brothers and sisters. I have the same problem that you got. 
Sometimes I want to go my own way. But we're too close to the end of time. Some of you are closer than I am. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. But some of you are closer than I am. In that verse where uh, father and mother, if you, if you love your father and mother more than me, you're not worthy of me, is uh, Matthew 10, verse 37 and 38. How seriously do we take the Word of God? How seriously do we take God? I mean, we, it's like, you know, okay, I'll get to that. I mean, he, he understands. If I eat that apple, he's okay. It's just an apple. If I miss a prayer meeting, who cares? It's just a prayer meeting. I mean, really? Is it just just a prayer meeting? That's okay. Eat that apple. I'm not trying to be a wise guy. It's important to our Creator to learn about Him. He has furnished this. This is a blood-bought book. But when I, and, and he's also made it really simplified for the Adventist church. He has given us the spirit of prophecy. When I read that Jesus told Mrs. White, Miss White, these are not your words that I'm giving you. These are my words. They belong to me. And he says, I want you to put them in books. He has made it really simple for us to learn about him. We don't have to turn to the scholars. He has given us the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is not greater than the scriptures, but it sure does give us a good understanding of these scriptures. Brothers and sisters, this is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. I'm I'm not going to read all those verses. I'm going to skip down. And I'm reading out of the New English Translation. You know, believe me, when I'm studying and I want to study real hard, I go to the King James Bible. And I look at it and I study it in depth. I have a, a concordance. I look at the words. But when I'm reading, my read, readability, I, I'm not that great of a reader. When I'm trying to read the King James Bible up here, it just flip and flutter and you know, just get out of control. But when I'm reading the New English Translation, the readability is there. And that's why I read it. Do I think it's the most accurate translation? No. But I know that all translations have a little problem. Some of them more than others. But you can still learn who God is through whatever you read. Amen. And there, in, in Scriptures... The different books of, of all the other names and titles, they, they can be a stepping stone to God. Whatever version you like right now. Uh, Hebrews verse, chapter 10, verse 24. I'm going to start there. It says, And let us not thought, let us not take thought of how to spur one another on to love and good works. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. And let us take thought of how to spur one another on to love and good works. Not abandoning, there's the not. Not abandoning our own meetings as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and even more so because you see the day drawing near. What does it say there? It says we need to get together. And I believe it's not just on the Sabbath day. Is that what they did when Jesus was here? I gotta get I gotta move on. There's no other being like our God. No other being. He says there's no God beside me. Maybe some of y'all know the verse in Scripture, but he says there's no God beside me. 
He is the creator of all things. You are here meeting with the creator of all things. We're meeting with the creator. Who created you? Who can create and sustain life? 